not everybody owns a home, not everybody rents, but affordability is being felt across the board, regardless mm. of your situation. So if you're a homeowner, it tends to be in the form of um, property insurance rates that have increased. Yeah. If you're looking for a home or, you know, to purchase or to rent, then it tends to be more affordable housing. But just affordability generally, I'm finding is the number one issue when we talk to people. To me, that's my biggest issue is affordability. Yeah. It's not even just real estate, by the way. I leased a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay. I go to the dealership to buy it. That payment, because I got an extended warranty, I'm trying to be smart. Mm -hmm. Just trying to do the right thing, by the way. Just trying to do the right thing. Just trying to do the right thing. That's right. And everything I do, almost $700 payment. Oh, my God. I leased it for three years. It's a used car. I try to do the right thing and buy the car I leased. Almost $700. I said, what's your what's your average payment here? He's like, people walking out with $1,500 payments. He said, our average payment's about $700 here. And he said, the average interest rate is 14%. Mm -hmm. What is happening right now in terms of affordability is not sustainable. It's not. And part of the challenge, by the way, right, we saw rates of inflation go down in most other places in the country before before Florida started to feel any yeah. semblance of relief. And a big part of that is because of housing costs. A big part of our issue is housing costs. And we need to fix it. We need to put aside partisanship and we need to invest in affordable housing. We need to have real conversations in a bipartisan way around property insurance and mm. how to fix that. And I got to be honest with you, if I had a legislative session where we didn't have to talk about a book ban or, you know, where we didn't have to talk about pick your culture war, just just fill it in. Yeah, I, I would be so happy because in my opinion, just my humble opinion, after been, being in this for six years, Florida has real challenges, not imagined challenges. We don't need to even look for them. We don't have to even look beyond our borders. We have real challenges right here that could occupy all of our time in a single legislative session. And that, I just think that's I think that's what we should be focused on. Relating to the affordability, where do you find common ground with the other side? Um that we know it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will tell you that what we've advocated for over the years is, you know, stop sweeping the Sadowski Affordable Housing Trust Fund. The good news is that we passed a bipartisan law that says they can no longer sweep that trust fund. The problem is that same law reduced, it basically cut the size of the trust fund to a third of what it had been previously. So even though it's getting fully funded, it's like two thirds less than what it should be, which I don't think is commiserate with the growth that we're having in our state. When was that? Gee, that was in the last few years. But with all of the affordability issues we've had, why would they cut it by a third? I, Good question. Garrett. <laughs> huh. Some of the stuff is some of the stuff is deeper than I understand, right? I mean, and I think for any voter who look, we're not supposed to pay attention. That's your job. We're not supposed to pay attention to this, right? That's the people of Florida. Just you know, we have families and lives and businesses, and we're just going about our days hoping that the people in charge do the right thing, right? Hey guys, if you want to watch the full episode of this clip, click right here. Make sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Thank you for watching.